I'm finally getting to a video where I can actually articulate myself at least a little bit. <laughs> Yo, um, I think for the next few weeks or so, I don't know how long I'm gonna do this, but um, I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of videos or something playing where something's playing in the background or in a small square somewhere around this area. Because, you know, I'm, I've been kind of tired. <laughs> and I don't, I don't have the brain power to deal with my computer right now. So it's just, you know, I'm just going to do what's easy until I can get the energy to do more complicated stuff. It's a work in progress, at least for me. Um, I told myself I wouldn't, like, make this the rest of these videos about my grief but it seems like I'm not really going to be able to access any other ideas until you know I say something else about it at least I mean hell I'm pretty sure the last few videos before I even mentioned the death of my mother I was constantly talking about what my dad would do or my dad's thoughts in some way shape or form anyway but um yeah you know, <laughs> but it's hard, yo. It's really hard trying to get through the loss of my parents and also trying to do everything that I'm supposed to do, you know, my normal routine. The kids downstairs playing. I'll probably be, I don't know, picking up some toys and Maybe a few other things while the videos are going. So yeah, for the next few weeks, while I'm a bit tired, I just have some stuff playing in the background, whether it be a video game or something else. I don't know, but you know, it's a dreary ass day. So this does not help with the mood at all. <laughs> oh boy. I got a lot of stuff to do. And I got a lot of stuff I want to do as well. I plan to post some animations soon. As soon as I actually get in the mood for everything. Because it seems like here lately it's been hard to like get in a groove. For some reason, every time I seem, every time it seems like I got it, something always happens. It's weird. Like, I can sit up here and, you know, I can get used to, I don't know, fit and read it into my day. Along with everything else I'm supposed to do as far as cleaning, keeping up with the girls, and many other things, you know. But then, once I get in a good groove of things, something happens. Because before my mother passed, I was slowly getting used to my routine. And I was like, okay, I'm going to post this. And, you know, I'm just going to post some things, keep my mom's spirit up, spirits up and everything like that. And then she passed. So I'm hoping that I can have a long streak of nothing happening. So that way I can get used to things and then I can, you know, be prepared for when things do happen because things are going to always happen no matter what. Went downstairs to check on the girls for a second. So far, they're doing all right. I think Leah's a bit upset that I went up, back upstairs, but you know. I'm just trying to get this routine back in order so that way things become a lot easier. I'm still kind of debating on whether I'm going to have hosts for my magazine or not. I might scrap the idea, I might not, because on some days I feel like, hey, maybe it would work if a, you know, if a host was here or, you know, or maybe it doesn't matter, and maybe I don't need a fucking host, so, you know, 
everything's just teeter tattering in my daggone head and I can't I can't seem to just pick one idea and just stick with it, you know what I'm saying? seem to stick to anything and I can't I can't seem to fit everything I want to fit in a day and I figure if I just dedicate certain days to certain things I would just irritate myself because it feels like I'm limiting myself and I hate the idea of limiting myself to stuff but just like the guideline situation I might just have to accept it and do it I don't know there's no guarantees when it comes to me you no know? And I'm just here or I'm there. And it's probably going to be that way for a while. <sighs> I have a lot of toys to pick up. These children got these toys all over the place. <laughs> I guess if I, um lose any sort of conversation throughout the video I guess I'll just start picking toys up I guess that's how you know <laughs> I ain't got nothing else to talk about it's terrible <laughs> oh boy I got a demon slayer game and I'm ready to play it you might see it on the channel other things I plan to put on the channel is maybe a few videos where I'm interacting with the girls a little bit. Like I said, this camera is a tool, just like any other tool that you can have. It's better to use it than to not use it. So if I gotta film in order to get through the day as far as keep myself focused, because God knows my focus level is terrible in certain days. I think the only thing that can that I can stay focused on for a long period of time is drawing and coloring. Everything else can go either way. <laughs> there's just so many there's just so many thoughts running through my head right now that make no sense. It's like this is why I can't seem to like pick a single topic. I mean, I would give myself a script, but it's like, uh, I don't feel like doing all that. <laughs> That's too much work. I already got a lot of work on my hands as it is. I might as well be as natural as possible instead of, you know, let me just hold up this piece of paper and uh, try to see if I can read off of it. I mean, nobody ever does that when they have a script, but that's what it feels like. It feels like you're actively just reading off of a piece of paper. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. <clears throat> I'm also trying to find a way to make money with my art until I can actually get my comics together in the magazine, whichever one comes first. You know, like I said, I'm still, I'm still doing commissions, so whoever wants to have me draw something for them, my email will probably be in the description somewhere. I'm also just sitting up here wondering what I'm going to fix the girls and have for dinner. I don't know. My husband was talking about ordering out, but I don't know if I'm on fast food right now. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I know one of the hardest parts about cooking to me would probably be baking. Because at least when, you cook, when you're cooking savory foods, you know, your seasons are there. Your salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. or if you don't want to use the powders, you could use actual onions and actual garlic, you know. And then you have your all-purpose seasonings. And you have your paprika, your turmeric, and 
many other things that you could just throw in there. <laughs> well, bacon is kind of complicated because depending on what you're making, you have to mix it up a certain way or it won't come out the way that you want it to. You have to be damn well near precise. While with something like soup, just throw it in the pot and go. I don't know. I don't think you can. I don't think you can mess up soup. I don't believe you can. It's, it's just water, tomato sauce if you feel like it. And then your seasonings, and then like your vegetables, and if you decide to put noodles in there, or if you have a rice soup, and you know stuff like that. You can't really mess up soup all the time. <laughs> they used to suck at making soup back in the day. What did I do? Banana squash and then tried to put some seeds. You know, this is probably why I need to work on my cooking to some degree. <laughs> but then, you know, I was younger when I made these mistakes. So if I make soup now, I can probably, probably ace the test, you know. Then again, if you're trying to put, that, what is, hold on, it was not banana squash, I'm, I'm mixing up banana peppers with butternut squash. So it was butternut squash in water, salt and pepper, and I forgot what the hell else I put up in there, but like I said, it was way back in the day, <laughs> and then back then I also had this french fry surprise where I would like take the garden burger put some fries in the garden burger in there and this was before morning's farm started making the ground up janks so you know <laughs> I, I put the garden burgers, I put the grillers in like a blender right I grilled that, I blended that up put it in there on top of the fries and thick fries too I just throw some cheese on top of the motherfucker. And that was my french fry surprise. No extra seasonings or nothing. I just threw it in the oven. And I could never get every single fry to fully cook. And because I always use thick fries. I don't know. But you know, I, 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 I'm slowly getting it together because you know cooking is about experimentation as well sometimes you can follow the cookbook exactly but the thing is the cookbook is a guide you don't have to do it the exact way all the time what is supposed the cook what the book cookbook is supposed to do it's supposed to Build your confidence. You're supposed to build your confidence with cooking. And then once you've gotten the steps down, then you can start adding a little bit of your own flavor in there. You know what I mean? I love cooking. I used to cook for mom a lot. I don't think I ever cooked for my father. If I do if I did back in the day, I do not remember. I do not remember what it was. But I used to cook for mom a lot. I remember back in the day I made her salmon. And I like put a little bit of lime juice on top of it. I believe she told me she liked it. I think I made it with two sides. I think it was nors. And I think a vegetable. But I forgot what that vegetable was. I don't know. Because you know I was raised technically pescatarian. We would, we would say we were vegetarian. Because we did mostly eat vegetables. I mean... There was times when I chose junk food or anything else. So, so I technically, 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 technically <laughs> grew up as a junk food junkie. And this was when I had the ability to choose what I wanted to eat. And it was always junk food. That's why I'm pre-diabetic now, which is why I need to, like, switch that shit up for good. I either need to get rid of junk food altogether or severely reduce my intake of junk food. Right now, eh, I'm meh. 
Like, I'm still eating vegetables. I still have a soda here and there. So I have like some juice here and there. I, I've had a couple of ice cream sandwiches here and there. Look, bruh, I, I haven't fully given up anything yet. I don't know what I, if I will, but I do plan to better my eating habits. Because diabetes ain't nothing to fuck with, and any other health problems ain't nothing to fuck with. Eating junk food every day is not a good idea. It's an idea, but it's not a good one. And I almost used to do that shit. I think my saving graces at times when I was eating a whole lot of junk food was like nachos. Because at least salsa was like tomatoes, jalapenos, and onions. That was basically what it is. Maybe they might add a few extra seasonings here and there in the salsa. You know. And then I like and then I like the snack on olives. Like that was later in my life though. When I started to get into like eating olives and stuff. But yeah, I think the hardest part about cooking is baking. I don't, here's the thing, I don't want to be trapped in this area where all I know how to do is make box cakes. I don't want to do that. I want to be like, I make box cakes when I'm lazy, you know. I use the already made stuff when I ain't got energy. But I actually do want to put the effort into, you know, cooking. I think one of these days I might want to attempt to make a seven course meal. Just to see if I can. You know? Because cooking is as much of a passion to me as art. <laughs> I know one thing. Art has been one of the main things getting me through all of this. You know? Seeing my mother in the casket kind of did some things to my brain. Kind of made me, you know, kind of made me think about death a lot more. And, and I know, here's the thing. You should not constantly be talking about these things because the power of life and death is in the tongue. But I'm talking to you, maybe help you if you're grieving but also to like ease my mind as well so uh, this, this is the other reason why i'm trying to say i'm not trying to make this about my parents death i'm not trying to dwell on that entirely too much you know because there's still a lot more life to live for me and that right there is a scary thought there's a lot more life to live for me and I don't know how to fully process that. I guess for now I'm taking it like day by day. But it's it's like a really it's really hard to comprehend. Like I go over there, my mother's room is that. And every time I look in there, I expect to see her laying on the bed, taking a nap, you know. Me interrupting her sleep just to see if she's okay, so I just go, Mom! And she'll wake up, you know. Yes, Khadija! You know. <laughs> and she'll be sleeping. And, um, I expect to do that every day, but I can't. And it's hard to, like, adjust to a, you, to a new norm. This is a new norm now. And this new norm is uh, it's really trying on my mind. Because I expect to go over there and just see her. And I have to force myself to not do normal shit. <laughs> you know? I have to force myself to go 
look, you can't text your mom anymore. You can't text your father anymore. These, this is what you have to get used to. And that's the hardest part about being an adult. You have to tell yourself these things instead of your parents priming you for certain situations. I don't have that guidance anymore, and I have to get used to playing the new role of being the guide. I'm the guide now. It's a lot of pressure being the guide. But I can do it. I can do it. And whoever else is out there struggling, you can too. You can also do it. We can do it together. Um, for now, I'm going to end the video. You should see maybe Jack and Dexter playing in the background. I don't know if it stopped by now. But, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.